Hello and welcome. I am Ben the Best Five, and I'm coming at you with yet another Kerbal Space Program video. And this is my fifth ISS build video. Now I am starting to wrap up the series here I've been doing with my ISS build for a couple of reasons. Well, I, I didn't want to, I wanted you know there to be enough time for there to be enough dedication to each module that each module could be properly appreciated. However, I didn't want to stretch on forever because you know a good series you know, has a start point and it has an end point, and you know that they don't always go on for forever. So because of that, I am probably going to. This is probably either, you know the second or third last. You know, I don't know depending on how many. I generally aim for about three modules per launch, but you know. It, well, per, per video, but it is very, these things are quite flexible indeed. So, yes. But, anywho, let's talk about the module we are launching right now, which is the um, ESA's Columbus module, which um, sits on the um, Unity, not Unity, um, Harmony module. Um, now, when I build this, I just like looking at those boosts as they fly away. Yes, as you can see here, me docking it now. Um, it might look like I am inserting it on the wrong side. I am in fact not. I am put. I am in fact docking it to the correct side. It's just generally overall my ISS is kind of upside down, or well the camera's upside down is one way I guess you could say it. But this, I am in fact docking in the correct direction to the correct port, even though in, in most pictures it doesn't look like it's on that side it looks like. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, this particular in real life, this particular scientific thing is pretty cool because um well, the European and the um, Japanese module, which I launched, both of which in today, um, they um, they they have um, all of their external science stuff, all of their experiments that they're doing in the vacuum of space, just directly you know outside the door, so to speak, which I think is pretty cool. Um, the American external laboratories aren't right outside the airlocks, you know? They're up on the external truss structure, which can make them a little bit more difficult to get to. Um, you know? However, these ones are pretty cool. They've got nice little, small little um, external things on there, which is pretty cool. They also are some of the ma major laboratories of the ISS. Because, although the um, the the Russians um they launched all the stuff that keeps the ISS in space basically and never launched their science module and the US only really has one science module and the rest of their modules are dedicated to the functioning of the station. Those two countries both however yeah have one dedicated uh science module and that's really it. So their their main contributions as agencies and nations is really used to provide science, which is pretty cool as well. Now you can see me uh, launching the GEM, or Japanese Experimentation Module. Um, and as you can see, I don't have a fairing. And I, in fact, uh, am launching it all the way off center. And I'm, in fact, basically doing this as terribly as possible. This is for no reason except for the fact that I got bored. I was like, you know, all these routine launches are starting to get boring, you know? So what if I did something totally crazy, like deliberately design something which would be damnedly difficult to fly, but then fly anyway, just because I can? So that's what I decided to do. I decided to launch two things which really should have been two modules together, remove the fairing, and went, heck, let's go, let's go do this, let's, let's go launch this. So yes, that, that was my my way of keeping it exciting because you know you guys are seeing this and you know um it might it might look a bit you know 
bit tedious, you know, but I do try and keep my content interesting, but, oh, by the way, if anyone does have anything that they, they would like to see my content, or would like me to change my content, leave me another comment, although I'm probably too late for that, because most people, you know, haven't, have stopped watching at this point. However, if you, if you, ha if you are still watching my content, uh, despite what the analytics say, um, yeah, you just say something in the comments, I guess, say, hey, look, um, I'm breaking the fourth wall because I was actually here, which is pretty cool. Anyway, so this is going to orbit. For this launch as well, it, it was also quite more challenging because I ended up requiring a, a lot more fuel to be used to actually insert myself into <laughs> the rendezvous because it was at quite an awkward inclination. If you look down the very left, bottom left of the screen, just above the um, docking stuff, you can see the um, artifact of that in my, um, uh, where, where it has like basically no fuel left in, in the engine, but yeah, that's that. So here I am uh, docking the Goliathan, biggest module on the station, Kibo Japanese Experimentation module to the ISS. Now you, if you look careful, oh wait no, yeah, I had to be very, yes, you guys don't need to be careful, I'm telling you that I was careful. You see I have, I have notes here which I, I refer to, you know, just to make sure that I'm, I'm not constantly just repeating myself. Yes, uh, I, uh, yeah, I had to just be careful not to hit the, uh, hit the radiators, because I didn't want to break them, because last time, well, then, well, some of them have been broken in the past, and that's not something I wanted to do again. You might also see the um, solar panels curving, which is not great, which was something that was going on before. However, a way you can simply fix that, because even though the, the, the robotics in this game are flimsy, you can fix them by um, either resetting them to um, build condition, or you can uh, play along with the cal controllers. Now I actually have, have both of those set up now because originally I did just have it set to just redo it with the cal controller but sometimes they are even buggy so I've got a second set of um, action buttons set up, you know, 7 through to 0 and if I press one of them then it, then they're, they're still bound in pairs so it makes those pairs snap back to build uh, um, so basically I just mess around with with those two different things until I have successfully gotten my um, solar panels fixed. Anyway, the module which you see me launching here is the um, other part of the um, Japanese uh, experimentation module, the exposed facility, which is a part of the um, uh, the gem up there, and it um. And it's, you might have seen me launching some robotics, which made my previous launch even more difficult. Um, well, those robotics, um, well, that robotic arm actually um, lets the external exposed facility be operated without an astronaut going on EVA. And there we can see the booster go away into the distance, which I actually quite like watching that. I don't know. Something about controlled debris. Anyway, so here's the one where you guys are meant to look carefully, where if you do look carefully, um, you will notice that this time I did in fact retract the uh, radiator as I in fact did not want to take it out. I guess that's kind of similar, but last time last time I should have probably retracted it because we did get quite close, but we managed to, to miss it somehow, and um, yeah. Also you will see that my solar panels have fixed themselves up. That was through a lot of messing around and stuff, but anyway, I can finally um, dock this to the um, ISS, and I will have in fact finished launching all of Japan's uh, modules. This is also the uh, first time in um, the space of a few videos, or well, last video, my ISS st uh, progress was actually a bit out of date, because um, the truss was assembled at the same time that some of these other modules were actually docked to it. So my progress at the end of the previous year was actually a bit, 
you know, buliant of the actual progress that the ISS made. But now, now with this um, exposed facility on the outside, and in fact, and the launch directly before that, we will in fact be up to date and have our ISS up to the actual correct state that it was in, which is always nice. Anyway, here is the nice cinematic shot of the space station with the sun behind it, uh, glimmering across the edges. I think that's a pretty nice look. Looks great for for screens, you know. Probably should make a uh, thumbnail out of that as well, shouldn't I? Yeah. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed watching my video. If you liked it, please leave a like. If you are, uh, if you want to tell me anything, as I mentioned before, leave a comment. Please do consider subscribing because subscriptions really help my channel out, get promoted. Other than that, thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day, and I hope to see you in my next video. Goodbye.